السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته عفوا بسم الله الذي لا إله سواه والحمد لله حمدا يليق بجماله وجماله وجلاله وكماله في جماله وجلاله حمدا يليق بعظيم وجزيل نعمائه وعطائه والصلاة والسلام على أشرف وأنبل وأكرم أنبيائه سيدنا مولانا محمد الطاهر التقي النقي الصادق الأمين المبعوث رحمة للعالمين وعلى آله الطاهرين الطيبين وأصحابه الغر الميامين تابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين آمين اللهم افتح مسامع قلوبنا لذكرك يا الله please open the hearing channels of our hearts to your ذكر آمين and so it is my dear brothers and sisters that we are to emphasize that the path of تزكيه النفس that the discipline of what is sometimes called tasawwuf in the true sense is not about anything more than akhlaq than to improve our akhlaq inma bu'istu li utammima makarim al-akhlaq as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam clearly identified for us the purpose for which he is on this earth, the practical purpose within Tawheed and within Ubudiyya, the practical purpose of that is to transform our akhlaq, to reform our akhlaq. And thus, what we are inside. And the more we mature, <coughs> excuse me, the more we realize, we realize that the world, the world outside as we perceive it, is made by what we are inside. The world is you and me. The world is an expression, an external expression through what is done in the world, an expression of what is inside of you and inside of me, mentally and emotionally, and so on. In a sense, in this asl, the world is what we are. The world is what we are. And what we are, and what we are, defines the world to us. If what we are inside is ugly, the world is ugly. If what we are inside is beautiful, the world is beautiful. <coughs> and there are worlds, micro worlds, and the macro world. And what I am inside of me affects, first of all, my immediate world of the surrounding. That's my world, the smaller world, myself, my family. What I am inside, what they are inside, define what the family is going to be like. And then another world, and a bigger world, and a bigger world, until, until the world. That's why Allah Azza wa Jal, in his divine wisdom, when he sent messengers to us, all the messengers from beginning till the end, their message is about this. To transform, to reform, to guide the human emotions, the human drives, the human internal energies, for they, will be the 
defining, if you will, um, operative cause, external cause for what the world will be like. And we have reminded each other last time, the one who surpasses you in akhlaq, surpasses you in, <clears throat> in tasawuf. And even more general, I said, the one who surpasses you in akhlaq, surpasses you in deen, the entire deen. The one whose deen is better in akhlaq is an expression of his better tawheed. That is, in the context of the tawheed, in the context of la ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. The best of those, <clears throat> excuse me, in their entire faith, in their entire deen, of those who affirm tawheed verbally, are those who are best in their akhlaq. Their akhlaq, the, the image inside of me. Khuluqi huwa suratu batini. Khuluqi huwa suratu batini. Khalqi huwa suratu wajhi wa zahiri. Wa khuluqi huwa suratu batini. My khuluq is the image of what I am inside, the picture of what I am inside. And my khalq is the picture, the image of what I look, what I look like outside. Man fataka fi al khuluq, fataka fi deen. Innama al umam al akhlaq ma baqiyat. Fa inhumu zahabat akhlaqhum. Even a contemporary poet in the 50s and before that, 19, or first half of the 20th century, very, very famous poet. And poets don't always speak the truth. Some poets and some poets. Some poets are just for its poetry. It's poetry. الشعراء يتبعهم الغاوون فلم تر أنهم في كل واد يهيمون ويقولون ما لا يفعلون إلا الذين but there are some poets who are exceptions so even the poet said realizing this the importance of أخلاق إنما الأمم الأخلاق ما بقيت the worth of civilizations the worth, the worth of nations is identical to their akhlaq. Innama al-umam al-akhlaq, al-umam al-akhlaq, this structure in the Arabic language is saying like civilizations equal akhlaq. Ummah, worth of an ummah equals akhlaq. Innama al-umam al-akhlaq. In other words, as though the existence, the wujud of an ummah, the wujud of a hadara, is by the wujud, the existence of akhlaq. If there is no akhlaq, there is no civilization. There is no ummah in the real sense of civilization and real sense of the worth of a nation. إِنَّمَا الْأُمَّمُ الْأَخْلَاقُ مَا بَقِيَتْ As long as those akhlaq remain. They will remain. فَإِنْهُمُ ذَهَبَتْ أَخْلَاقُهُمْ ذَهَبُوا If instead their akhlaq, which defined and identified, and he means by akhlaq here, beautiful akhlaq, if those beautiful akhlaq, avanas, are gone, then that civilization is gone. Then the worth, the worth of that civilization, of that nation, now is gone. وهذا حق ما قال شاعر معاصر. Indeed. As Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم said sometimes about the poet when he said something very true in jahiliya time. A poet in a jahiliya time before Islam, ante Islam period, not anti, ante Islam period, 
in that Jahiliya time, a poet had said, Ala kullu shay'in ma khala Allah batilu. Ala kullu shay'in ma khala Allah batilu. Indeed, anything and everything besides the divine, besides Allah, in its reality, is batil, has no value. It's like it doesn't exist, not in the physical sense, but in the, um, in the um, sense of worth and value, <coughs> and sense of effectiveness, and ta'thir, and effectiveness. Ala kullu shay'in ma khala Allah batilu. Anything besides Allah is not worth thinking about, minding about, fighting about, attaching to oneself to, uh, grieving about, missing, hoping for. Besides Allah, nothing is worth that. Relative to Allah. أَلَا كُلُّ شَيْءٍ مَا خَلَى اللَّهَ بَاطِلُ Rasulullah sallallahu had said the most truthful <clears throat> of what a poet ever said amongst the Arabs is this one. The most truthful أَحَقْ أَصْدَقُ أَصْدَقُ كَلِمَةٍ قَالَهَا الشَّاعِرِ أَلَا كُلُّ شَيْءٍ مَا خَلَى اللَّهَ بَاطِلُ So he said sallallahu alayhi wa this is a world of truth. And of the, of the most truthful, if not the most truthful, word that a poet ever said in the Jahiliya time. <clears throat> so therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, when we, when I, when we don't mind akhlaq, when we relegate akhlaq to a secondary position or a tertiary position, we are relegating the divine to those positions. Because akhlaq to us as Muslims ought to be identified with what? The attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal. For us to manifest, I repeat, those attributes at our human level, in the best potential human level. Fallahu jamilun yuhibbu jamal. Allah is beautiful. Loves beauty, meaning Allah is just, He loves those who are just. So He loves the khuluq of justice. Allah is a Rahim, lovingly merciful, Yuhibbul Ruhama. He loves those who show loving mercy or merciful love. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Halim, all Halim, all forbearing. يحب الحلماء loves those who have the character of, of حلم Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is صبور loves those who have the character of صبر with emphasis Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is عليم he has حب love for those who have علم the right علم Allah subhana, Allah is not a jahil, is not ignorance, is not ignorant. He does not have hub love for the ignorant, the fool, stubborn ignorant, and who continues to be ignorant and does not attempt to modify and to change and to reform his or her ignorance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is hakim, yuhibbul hukama. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is rafiq, yuhibbu rifq and so on. This is Allahu jameelun, yuhibbu jamal Our akhlaq are to be beautiful. Because if we choose other than that, we're choosing other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what a terrible choice it is. I must keep emphasizing and please remember that. And we'll go forward. That everything about tazkiyah, everything about in our, our relationship to Allah Azza wa is about akhlaq, akhlaq, akhlaq. 
those who want to be murid, those of us who want to be murid, ماذا يريدون؟ ماذا يريدون؟ أما أن مريد is one who wants, desires, wills for something. مريد, what's that thing? What's the مريد? ماذا يريد المريد؟ ماذا؟ القرب من الله عز وجل. غاية همة المؤمن العارف العالم باب قربه من ربه عز وجل هذا الذي تريد أتريد قرب ربك بسوء أخلاقك هل يتصور أنني أريد القرب من الله عز وجل وأنا محافظ مدافع على وعن نقص أخلاقي إن لم أقل سوءها Will I be one who truly seeks nearness to Allah Azza wa Jal when I defend and justify my mediocre akhlaq? That can never happen, regardless of what my claims are, regardless of how verbose I am, regardless of how much I know. By the way, as I have said many times, may Allah help me and I'm reminding myself through you, Knowledge by itself is not what is intended. العلم مقصود لل العمل. Knowledge by itself is not the is not worth. Knowledge is worth to the extent it enables me and I strive to implement it in enabling me to act in the ways that he, subhanahu wa ta'ala, loves, and therefore that are beautiful. Ilm is meant to be reformative, transformative. Tazkiyah is meant to be reformative, transformative in my akhlaq. That's how I know whether I'm improving in my tazkiyah or not. That's how I know whether I'm drawing nearer to Allah or not in what I am doing. By gauging and evaluating and looking critically at my akhlaq. And sometimes some other external agency may help me in evaluating myself. Is this changing? Am I going forward? And this reminds you of what? خطوات القلب خطوات القلب السير إلى الله بخطوات القلب وما معنى خطوات القلب and what does the steps of the heart mean what do they mean عبد المتين yes and what are those steps I think you know them. I don't mean to scare you. Don't be scared. See, I chose you amongst all of these people to give me the answer. So it means I, I think highly of you. You're too shy. Ayub. You're too shy. Khalas. Yes. So the steps of our hearts are the changes that takes inside that takes place inside of us pertaining to our what we harbor inside, what we are inside, the emotions inside, the drives inside, the quality of the energy inside, from bad quality to a better quality to a better quality to a better quality. That's the motion of the heart. It's not a biological, physical motion. Steps. It's the steps of my akhlaq. From impatient to patient. From unkind to kind. From hateful to 
uh, loving, from angry to calm, from loving wealth and power to being have no such an attachment inside of me for wealth and power. Instead, I am giving and caring from a person inside who is arrogant to a person who becomes humble. humble. So these are the steps of the heart. That's how the heart moves. From a person who has no hair, who doesn't care about who is around and how he or she speaks, loud or not loud, foul or not foul, does things in, in, in front of everybody regardless of where they are. We call that nowadays what? What do we call it nowadays? Hmm? Confidence, yeah. We call that confidence. Some call it confidence. What else? It's an expression of freedom. That's freedom. It's freedom. Some of that is simply called what? Qillatu haya. Some of that is simply the khuluq, the vile khuluq. The worst khuluq in Islam. The opposite of haya because the most beautiful khuluq in Islam, as I shall remind myself and you later, is haya. So from a person who is like that to a person who, subhanallah, is more composed, more humbler, is very aware of the environment around, senses with his or her heart Allah's presence. And how could I in that presence raise my voice or act foully or do things that are even haram in public? Because some, of, some people may commit haram, astaghfirullah, but they have some haya. They wouldn't do that publicly because of this character called haya. But some, the heck with everybody. You know, not only the crime of committing haram, but this other moral crime of having no sense of i'tibar, of consideration for the feelings of others that would, be, that would be very uncomfortable, at least, if not hurt by my conduct in public that way. That's lack of haya. So from a person who lacks haya, to a person with haya, that's step forward, that's going forward. I cannot emphasize this enough. And Ya'lamullah, as I say that, I am reminding myself through you. Al-akhlaq, al-akhlaq, al-akhlaq. Innama al-umam al-akhlaq ma baqiyat. Fainhum dhahabat akhlaqum dhahabu. And you, my dear brothers and sisters here in this fellowship, you are all very intelligent people. We are all subject to the changes that do take place in the world. The technological, scientific, material, also changes that take place in the world. Sometimes those technological, industrial, scientific, materialistic advancement sometimes are misconstrued by most, it seems, of the average as development in that equals development in mental attitude, development in character. Absolutely not. Not every person who contributes, not every person who contributes to these advancements is therefore a sort of a, an evidence for the character he or she displays. In other words, material things, these advancements, anybody can pursue them 
and anybody with struggle can achieve them. That doesn't, however, speak of their character, their khuluq. The khuluq could be horrible or it could be good. That means I'm trying to say that teach yourselves and your children and your loved ones not to associate the two together. Not to give up a beautiful khuluq you have, such as haya, if you have, if we have haya, to give it up because we observe some of those who are, for example, well in this area, whether they are Muslim or non-Muslim, who are well in this area, and we see them normally behave, normally, standardly, behave without haya. And we don't see that as anymore without haya. So we begin to do the same thing. Because it's, well, these good people, these intelligent people are doing that too. So it should be good because they are intelligent. Intelligent in this aspect. I say whether they're Muslim or non-Muslim. No. No. Each one of us will be asked individually, Muslim and non-Muslim, about the value of our akhlaq on the Day of Judgment. And it is a must. But we're not going to be asked, why didn't you know Schrodinger equation? Why didn't you take, contribute in, in, a, in developing and inventing this technology? No. Alhamdulillah. Because these are tools, instruments, material tools and instruments. Allah is not going to ask me, why were you not rich? Why didn't you make enough effort like the other one to be a billionaire? No. But he will ask me, why did you lie? Why didn't you have haya? Why didn't you have sudq? Why didn't you have compassion? Why didn't you have rahmah? Why didn't you have rifq and ra'fa and hilm? That I will be asked about. And it takes, it takes, of course, character. It takes struggle. It takes sometimes suhba, fellowship, to be able to counter those challenges. When you're alone, some people, when alone, will not do good. Vir you know, virtuously, in values, morally. But when they are with the right type of, in, in the right type of environment, it helps them do good. When they are in fellowship, in suhba, it helps us to do good. Because a cumulative effort negative is better encountered by a similar cumulative effort that is positive. And it helps you. If you see the others doing good, as you saw others doing wrong and you are influenced, it is good to see others doing good and you would be, bi'idhnillah, influenced positively. It's normal human behavior. Am I making sense about the importance of akhlaq? Or am I overemphasizing? To me, I have been doing this for the last, at least technically speaking, about akhlaq, maybe at least 20 years. About emphasizing this. And look at me. I feel I have achieved nothing. Ya alamullah. I don't know. Allah knows. It just seems to me the more I strive, the more I know there's nothing like akhlaq. And the more Allah Azza wa I, I believe, shows me different reasons, rationally and spiritually, 
why it is so. Especially when I am made to realize the relationship between akhlaq and his attributes, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And not here, here. لا يغرنكم تقلب الذين كفروا في البلاد متاع قليل. So I say from the spirit of this ayah in Surah Al Imran, لا يغرنا ولا يغرنكم تقلب أهل الفسق في فسقهم. لا يغرنكم تقلب أهل سوء الأخلاق في سوءهم. As Allah says in the Quran, um, don't let the seemingly apparent to you ways to enjoy themselves of the unbelievers, don't let that delude you. It's just superficial. It's not profound. It's not really beautiful. Don't, because they are kuffar. They don't know better. So I say to myself and to you, don't let those whom we observe with akhlaq that are ugly, akhlaq that are not consistent with the divine attributes, even though some of us may not see them as ugly at the moment, don't let them delude us in giving up beautiful akhlaq to espouse their akhlaq. So if you're a person who is, again I repeat, mashallah, yani restraining through haya, and then you see them behaving others in ways that have no restraint at all, and yet they look at you, they're having fun, They look like they are happy. They're having fun. And all expressed in lack of haya. Please, don't let that delude you. لا يغرنكم لا يغرنكم تقلبهم في سوء أخلاقهم Don't be deluded by the fact that they seem to enjoy what they enjoy in this context of su'ul akhlaq. Don't. That's only superficial. And later we shall talk more about the deeper reasons for why we shouldn't. Inshallah ta'ala. Fa ya ibadallah al-akhlaq al-akhlaq al-akhlaq. As we are here before even we begin speaking technically about the process of tazkiyah to nafs, make sure that you and I continuously and at home and when in the masjid and outside and when you walk and when you shop and when you walk and when you take a break and when you travel under all circumstances be watching for what? For your akhlaq. Be watching for your akhlaq. And remember things we're learning, review them, revisit them. Empty to be filled up and help yourself with dhikr as we have said already and we shall repeat later help ourselves with a lot of dhikr a lot of dua and a lot of salah and it is now time for me to introduce at this point I'm going to interject it in the structure of the system or the process of, of, of explaining to us tazkiyah to nafs. Now I'm going to interject something also practical, salah. Let me say one thing. Allahumma a'inni. Anyone who claims to be a murid of Allah Azza wa Jal, through the irada of any, of any shaykh, through the means of any teacher or a group of teachers, Anyone who claims to be a teacher, anyone to claim to have true hub and desire for Allah Azza wa without salah, knowingly, 
is a liar. A liar meaning ليس صادقا في طلبه مولاه. ليس صادقا في طلبه مولاه. أصدق في طلب مولاك. Remember that first statement. Such person is not therefore صادق, sincere and true in the claim of seeking the divine. Seeking Allah Azza wa Jal. Salah, salah, salah. Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, إِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ كَانَتْ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ كِتَابًا مَوْقُوتًا Verily, salah is and has been decided to be for the believers, al-mu'mineen, kitaban mawquta, an obligatory with a schedule appointed. Ala al-mu'mineen and a kitaban means this is obligatory, means this is obligatory. Kataba Allahu ala fulan, meaning it means literally it says Allah wrote upon this person which means Allah made it obligatory Allah says in the Quran for example Allah wrote upon himself merciful love that means he made it obligatory upon himself subhanahu wa ta'ala to deal with his creation in the attribute with the attribute of rahma katada ala nafsi in other words made it obligatory inna salata kanat ala al mu'minin kitaban mawquta in other words for those who believe those who have iman salah is obligatory upon them through an appointed decided time schedule which he basically is saying us, the believers are those who seek the divine sincerely. And if you want to seek him sincerely and to hope to arrive, salah first, practically. That relationship with Allah Azza wa Jal, which, I say, which we shall say more about as we go along, inshallah. <laughs> So if time for salah comes and I have an interest in other things, legitimate things even, let alone illegitimate things, I am not that sadiq in my claim of desiring him as the witch. So I desire him and then he calls me to him and I say, no, I have something else to do. Is that claim of wanting him true? I love you, Ya Allah. Help me come to you. Okay, Ya Abdi. Come to me now. Oh, I'm sorry, I have something to do. It doesn't make sense, does it? But we do that. And then the worst is we begin to judge. You oh, know, no, I was, no, no, you didn't understand. I had to do, no, 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 no. Again, defense mechanisms. Anybody can justify anything. Iman, Sidq with Allah Azza wa Jal implies I do not utter a word. I do not entertain an energy inside of me that is inconsistent with what he loves, with his commands. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's Sidq. Sidq al Mahabba, Sidq al Qasd, Sidq al Tawajjuh. Inna salata kanat ala al mu'minina kitaba mawquta. So if I don't, since he says Ala al-Mu'minina kitab mawquta and I don't respond, that means there is something in my iman that is not proper. At least. That's why a person who completely says La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah Alhamdulillah entered the field of the field of Islam, no salah is obligatory, but la yusalli deliberately. Says Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Al-haddu baynana wa baynahum as-salah, man tarakaha faqad ashrak. Or fi riwayatin, man tarakaha faqad kafar. That a person who 
deliberately, in other words, this is the, the including commentary of the ulama, who deliberately gives up salah, does not perform salah as a Muslim, claiming a Muslim, this person, the text says kafar, meaning literally it's a verb, committed kufr, or ashrak, committed shirk, billah. And he says the, the dividing boundary between us and them, that is, between Iman and Kufr, between the Muslims and the Mushriks, in those days especially, the dividing boundary is Salah. If you claim to be a Muslim and you don't perform Salah, you have committed Kufr. Now the ulama have discussed this Kafara, statement Kafara, is it equal to now kafir? Is this ashraka, is it equal to mushrik? Or is it simply yani, uh, intermittent, transient, local, in time? They have different opinions. And it is terrible already to know that they have different opinions. When I say different opinions, some of them say, no, it is, the person is not a kafir. In other words, he's not, he's not to be rejected from the fold of Islam. But he's committed an act like an act of a person who is kafir. Not that he is a kafir. And these are the opinions of the likes of Imam Shafi and others. But others say, that means with their arguments, he becomes a kafir. That is, he rejected the fold of Islam. Irtad, in other words. They have different opinions. Please allow me to mention that, because if we, if we claim to seek the divine in Islam, and to seek tazkiyah to nafs, which sometimes some people call in the right sense, tasawuf, there is no tasawuf without salah. There is no tariq ila Allah without salah. Ida ahbabta, ata'ata. Inna al-muhibba liman yuhibbu, muti'u. If you have hub love, you obey the beloved. If you deliberately and stubbornly disobey, especially if it becomes a pattern that's not only an indication, that is sometimes an evidence that one does not have a love that one claims. And plus, Salah, as we shall learn, is for us, for us to cleanse us, to help us draw nearer to the divine Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah Azza wa says, also in the Quran, Utlu ma uhiya ilayka min al kitabi wa aqim al salah. Inna salata tanha anil fahshai wal munkar wa la dhikrullahi akbar wa Allahu ya'lamu ma tasnahun. Read and recite of that which is revealed to you of the scripture. وَأَقِمِ الصَّلَاةِ And perform salah. Establish salah. أَقِمِ الصَّلَاةِ Not just صَلِّ أَقِمِ الصَّلَاةِ And الإقامة from قام يقوم وأقام يقيم Qama is to stand, aqama is to make something stand straight and right and erect and solid. Aqama. So aqama salah is like you build, imagine you build a structure in a solid way so that it doesn't fall. Aqamtu hadihi sariya. I aqamtu this column, this pillar. That means salah is an iqamatu salah. You say, call iqamah, Allahu Akbar. No. Yes, that's how we do that. 
with our tongue, إِقَامَتُهَا In other words, we should do that in a way that makes it, that shows it, expresses it in a way that is solid, strong, not wavery. أَقِمِ الصَّلَاةِ إِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ تَنْهَا عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ For verily, Salah forbids and keeps away from munkar, that which is vile and evil, and that which is fahsha, that which is excessive and immoral. I'm going to stop here, inshallah ta'ala, and we'll resume, bi'inillahi ta'ala, tomorrow at this point, of inna salata tanha anil fahsha'i wal munkar wa la dhikrullahi akbar, wa sallallahumma wa sallim wa barik, على سيدنا مولانا محمد وعلى آله الطاهرين وأصحابه الميامين التابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت استغفرك وأتوب إليك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته